All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is November 11th, 11-11. This is a very special day. Not only is it the first championship of High Rock season, but it's the luckiest day of the year in my book. We are currently in Crestline, California. It is currently 8 to 10 in the morning. It's about 37 degrees outside. I've got tons of layers on. I'm absolutely freezing. To be honest, I have not done a High Rocks workout since High Rocks World Championships. I, um, I'm over it. You know, I like to take time off. I like to drink beer. I like to do Ironmans. Yeah, sure, I showed up to Birmingham, but I haven't touched the stuff in a long time. So today is officially the first day we get back into training. I'm still focusing on doing my Murph record, but I'm also going to start slowly bring back in the High Rocks. So what's the goal this year? 52 minutes doing the High Rocks. Set the world record. Whoop everyone's ass. Championship, championship, world record, world championship. That's the goal this year. So what we're going to do is you got over here on my right, your left, we've got the beef factory. This is where all the muscle is made. Over here on the left, we've got the cardio castle. Today, we're going to blend in a workout that basically takes the hardest aspects of high rocks and mixes it in with the most intense aspects of the Murph World Record. We're going to glue them together for a very savage hour, hour, 15 minute long workout. I'm going to be trying to hold the world record pace on the running the entire time and then really just put in over overweight weight limit when it comes to the sleds the push-ups the squats i'm just gonna blow out my muscles see if i can last it so um i got a couple training partners here but in reality the whole goal is to stay focused on the prize which is going to be breaking some savage records station one is here station two is going to be sled pull sled sled drag over your shoulders station three is sled pull you step back and row it in. I'm sure you guys how to do it. Station four, it's push up. Station five, it's air squats. So, 1,000 meters on the skier, you're going to have to drag the sled from there all the way up, all the way back. Um, you're going to have to do the same exact thing all the way there, all the way back. And you have to do 200 push ups, um, 300 air squats. That's it. You see the back on that. Ski, sled, sled, push up, pull ups. No. You have to do a thousand meter row before the push ups and the um, squats. Question. Good? Yeah. right here is the world record pace from last season and uh, we're up at you know 5,000 feet not bad running feels really easy my body from uh, all the calisthenics is pretty tight so Skier goes tough. Got power, but I'm tight. It's hard to start in the cold. You know, uh, from what I can tell, no one can run with me. I'm not even running in shape. So this is a good start to the year. Wow, different style of sled push for sled work. Really, get your lower legs more than your quads. Ah. That altitude also just keeps you from 
Again, your breath. Ah. 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 Jesus. My heart rate's a lot lower, lower than it normally is, which is good. I'm able to sustain intensity without peaking. Oddly enough, my muscle groups are still tired from all the volume. So that's what's holding me back. Still on pace. That row went too hard. It's okay. Okay. Don't give a shit. I hate this one. Suck you.
Tell you who! Nice. Nice. Okay. That little Murph hybrid workout. 2.9998 miles and 44.45. And, uh, fuck. My heart rate wasn't even that bad. Last week I got 20 hours of training. This week, about about 19 and it's just my muscles don't want to squeeze and do the work my heart not so bad i bet you i never got above 165 beats per minute and that's probably you know, it's 90 percent. but when i'm going hard i'm like 97 99 and i sustain it which crushes you but i can't even get it right now just because of how tired I am. Like I could feel it when I was doing my push-ups. I was starting to let go up here in my upper chest and my deltoids right here. And uh, squats, it's just, you can see how puffed up my VMO is right now. It's like blowing out of my pants. And even my calves are starting to go. Uh, and that's just it. Like if you end up going, if you end up going for gold in these kind of workouts, and you really want to set world records, it ends up coming down to little small muscle groups, never the heart rate. I mean, you're either fit enough to do the job, but the question is whether or not like you can sustain it. And you know how I learned at a very early age, running races, you can be the fastest guy there, but if a shoelace comes untied, you're still fucked. So metaphorically, that just means if this little muscle comes untied, my calf goes, my VMO goes, my abs during world championships went last time, you just have to focus, rebuild those muscle groups, and stack upon them. You have to build a whole new foundation to go off of next year. So we, I decided to go for the Murph World Record this year because I realized that last year it was small muscle groups that were holding me back. And the one thing I remember when I was going for the Murph World Record was, yeah, I, 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 I didn't get the time that I wanted, but it wasn't because of my fitness. It was because this little area right here, this little area right here, and I'm never going to let those things hold me back. So... Uh, this is just a start. I think we're 200 days out, 205 days out from world championships. It's a lot of training cycles. I don't know if I believe this bullshit because this is a heart rate monitor wrist. I didn't have my strap on, but uh, 96 hours I need to recover. Uh, this is at 179, which is just not true. But you can see that's where I was sustaining those high runs and holding through. But uh, pretty good stuff. Now we're off to go do the announcement. So if you guys obviously can watch this delayed, but I hope you watch the announcement too and enjoy it.